Which insect is the second oldest domesticated insect? It not only supplies us with a natural source of sweetener for our food, but is also responsible for pollinating most of our food crops. It's the honeybee, of course. No prizes for getting that right, it's the name of the video. In this video, we're going to take a head to tail look at some of the anatomical features which enable the hardworking honeybee to perform those tasks. Starting at the head end, the most noticeable feature of a bee's head are its large eyes. The bee uses its eyes to find flowers, and to do this particularly well, bee eyes are adapted to see in the ultraviolet spectrum. Some flowers have ultraviolet patterns to make them particularly visible to bees so bees can find them easily. The flowers benefit by getting pollinated, and in exchange the bees get nectar and pollen. Although it's not immediately obvious, bees actually have five eyes. The two large compound eyes, and three simple eyes. In addition to eyes, bees also have a pair of antennae, which allow them to feel their way around in the dark. They can also use them to pick up chemical messages sent by the other bees. The bee's brain processes the information from the eyes and antennae. The brain is hardwired with instincts, but can also learn a few simple things. A bee's brain is pretty small, around the size of a sesame seed. It has less than a million nerve cells, which may seem like a lot, but we humans have over 100 billion. Despite its small size and relatively few nerve cells, as mentioned before, it is hardwired with instincts, and one of the coolest instincts is the way in which a bee tells other bees where to find a good source of nectar and pollen. Every morning the worker bees leave the hive and head off in different directions in search of flowers and bloom. If a bee finds a good patch of flowers, it would be ideal if we could let the other bees know, so they could also harvest nectar and pollen while those flowers are still in bloom. The way that bees tell each other where the flowers are is pretty amazing. Not only can a bee's eyes see an ultraviolet, but they can also see the polarization patterns of the sun's rays as they pass through the atmosphere, which means that they can automatically detect the direction of the sun even on a cloudy day. Let's say that in our example, the flowers are at a 45 degree angle from the sun's position. When the bee returns to the hive, the bee then does a little dance, known as the waggle dance. The waggle dance involves the bee doing a figure eight, wiggling her abdomen as she travels along the straight part of the figure eight, before turning around and doing it again. The angle at which she does the wiggly part of the dance lets the other bees know the direction in which to fly in order to find the patch of flowers, with the top of the honeycomb representing the direction of the sun. So in this particular example, as the flowers are at a 45 degree angle from the direction of the sun, the waggling will go at 45 degrees from the direction to the top of the honeycomb, The bee will then turn around and do it again, over and over, several times. And while she's doing this, she'll be surrounded by other worker bees, keen to find out where the source of nectar and pollen is. But wait, there's more. The duration of the waggle part of the dance lets the other bees know approximately how far away the flowers are. The shorter the dance, the closer the flowers. The longer the dance, the further away the flowers are. One second of wiggling roughly translates to around a kilometer's distance, provided there is no headwind. So in our example here, the bee is saying that the flowers are not only at 45 degree angle to the right of the sun, but around two kilometers away. So what do all the bees do when they get this good source of nectar? Well, they lap it up with their tongue. Bees have quite a long tongue and they use it to extract nectar from flowers. The nectar then flows to a sac called a crop. The crop is also known as the honey stomach, because bees use it to carry nectar back to the hive where they turn it into honey. Of course bees wouldn't be able to get to and from the flowers to collect the nectar without wings. Bees beat their wings at 230 times per second. Aside from flying, while in the hive the wings are also used as fans to evaporate some of the water from the honey so it doesn't ferment. Bees have four wings. 
Some flies are colored like bees, so predators will leave them alone in a process called Batesian mimicry. To tell them apart, count the wings. Flies have only two. For example, hoverflies often look like bees and are also usually seen around flowers. These are all hoverflies, even though they look like bees, wasps, and hornets. However, if you watch one land and look closely enough, you'll see that instead of a second set of wings, they have a tiny pair of balancing organs called haltiers. Bees' wing muscles have another use, for they also produce heat. Bees vibrate the wing muscles to warm up their bodies and together keep the hive warm. They can do this with or without moving the wings. All this flying, fanning, and heat production requires a lot of oxygen. Unlike us mammals, bees do not breathe through their mouth, but instead breathe through holes down the sides of their body called spiracles. The spiracles enter into tubes, which take air to the organs. Although I've only shown one here, there are quite a few of them all the way down the side of the body. Moving further back along the body, we'll now look at the bee's abdomen. Bees have wax glands on the belly, between the segments of the abdomen. If we pick a joint between segments and zoom in for a closer look, the wax oozes out of the grooves between segments. The bees chew the wax in order to sculpt it into comb cells. I should point out that, unlike this diagrammatic view, real beeswax is clear and colorless when a bee first makes it. It only later gets stained from pollen and other materials. Bees have an area on their hind legs in which they carry pollen. It's wide and slightly dished, has long hairs, and is known as a pollen basket. Let's take a closer look. So you can see the long curved hairs to catch pollen, and the wide spoon-shaped area to hold pollen. And here's the bee's knee, which has nothing to do with pollen. Some of the pollen gets brushed off when the bee visits the next flower, fertilizing it, but most of it gets taken back to the hive to make a high-protein food for the bee larvae. And now we get to the other business end of the bee. In the tip of its abdomen, the bee has a sting to defend the hive from intruders. It is an adapted egg-laying organ, so workers and queens have them, but not drones, because drones are male. The sting system has a few parts. Venom is made in the venom gland. It is stored in the venom sac. And the venom bulb pumps the venom through the sting. A bit of advice if you're stung. Worker bees have barbed stings, so the sting stays in place after the bee leaves. Some of the bee's organs stay with the sting, so the bee will die after stinging. If you're stung, remove the sting promptly as it continues to pump venom in. It also gives off alarm chemicals called pheromones to let the other bees know where the intruder is, so the quicker you get rid of it, the fewer times you'll be stung. Do not pull it out with fingers or tweezers, as this will squeeze more venom out, making it hurt even more. Instead, scrape it out sideways with a fingernail or a credit card. But if you've been stung, don't say you haven't been warned, as the bee's yellow and black bands are a warning about the sting. The combination of yellow and black is nature's hazard sign. And that's all, folks. Be back later with more videos. Haha. <laughs>